This morning, a warning that we want to make sure you have not missed from the parents of a Putnam County boy who died from a brain eating amoeba. Tanner Wall was just 13 years old. He died last month after his parents say that he uh, caught the parasite while swimming in a Florida lake. Dr. Mobin Rathor is a pediatric infectious disease doctor joining us via Zoom this morning to explain the risks of this kind of parasite to our children and to others for that matter. Doctor, thanks for joining us. Always great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me, Jim. So, Dr. Rathor, can you explain how does something like this happen? Well, it's a very unfortunate uh, disease, as you know, uh, and this happens in the summertime and kids are families are having fun. This is one of those uh, infections that occurs by swimming and actually diving uh, in uh, warm water, bodies of warm water. And uh, it's an organism that lives there, lives in the bottom of the uh, body of warm water. And, uh, you know, once you diving in, the water will go through your nose and then it go, and there's a plate or a bone plate at the between the brain and the nose. It goes through that and causes infection at the brain. So it's a very uh, unfortunate, very serious illness that has a very high mortality. So uh, it, it's interesting because, I mean, as you know, we are surrounded by lakes and ponds and it gets hot and kids like to swim. Uh, you know, I know Tanner's uh, family says that he grew up swimming in ponds and lakes, as did his own father. So is this parasite basically on the top of the water? It's hiding in algae. I mean, is there anything that you could say to people who, who frequent lakes and ponds that uh, is there a certain area that they should avoid? Well, I think, as I said, it's in the bottom of the uh, uh, of the body of water. And there are a few things you can do. I mean, there's no guarantee for absolute safety, but you can use a $1 fix of using a, paper, a nose clip. And if you use the nose clip while you're diving, that will prevent water from going into your nose. The other thing is don't try not to disturb the bottom of the lake because, you know, kids, you know, they want to, yeah, everybody's having fun. You're going to the bottom, you're... You know, so I think those are the things you can avoid. Remember, it's still a rare condition. It's not a very common condition. And uh, fortunately, we now have a treatment for it that seems to work better. Uh, prior to the, having this treatment, there are only five or six survivors in the United States of this infection. Florida and Southeast and South are uh, parts of the country where this infection seems to be more common. And unfortunately, early on, it's very difficult to diagnose this infection. It looks like a, a sore throat or a viral infection. So it's extremely difficult to diagnose it early on. But once you suspect it, even before you have diagnosed or confirmed the diagnosis, once you suspect it, there is treatment for that. You can get this drug, which is called uh, miltifosin, uh, and it's available uh, to uh, any anybody right now. In the past, you had to get it from the CDC. So having that drug is, is a great benefit now. So it's interesting that you bring that up, doctor, because as we know just from, from Tanner's parents, they initially took him when he was not feeling well to the hospital. He was told that he had strep throat. They just didn't believe it given how sick he was, and they actually took him out of that hospital, took him to a different hospital, and that's where they received this devastating diagnosis. Let's first, can you explain what the symptoms are? Because if there is a treatment and earlier the better, then we want to make sure that our our viewers are aware of them. As I said, the symptoms could look like any of those symptoms, sore throat, not feeling well, maybe a fever, achy. It's not, it's, there are no, not specific symptoms that you will have that will point you towards this diagnosis. The important thing is the history, the fact that he was swimming in a lake, diving in a lake, uh, in a pond, and you know, if he can get more history, was he going to the bottom of it? I think that's what helps. That's the biggest challenge with this disease, unfortunately, that early on you cannot differentiate it from so many other infections that may look similar to this and occur in children. A little bit later, obviously, uh, it becomes easier to diagnose, but that's why it's important uh, to have that history. So if you suspect it, you can start the treatment earlier. It's the earlier treatment that's the most important thing in the management of this infection. Such an important reminder, given the fact that it's, pre it's prevalent between July and September. Dr. Mobin Rathor, thank you, local pediatric infectious disease doctor, for your time to appreciate it. And we want to point out that, uh, that Tanner Wall was, was perfectly healthy, according to his family. His middle name was Lake. 
He loved to swim in the water and that he was swimming with a group of 50 other campers, yet he is the only one that contracted this parasite. Now, we should note that we are not naming the campground where Tanner went swimming because it has not been directly linked to the boy's death.